Hi, it's Jan. Um, it's May 19th, 2021. I haven't talked to you for a couple of months now. It's uh, been a crazy time in New York City. Of course, we're getting our act together now that the pandemic is almost over, but a lot has happened in these last two months that the reason I haven't been in touch is because of my knees. I'm having trouble with my knees, both of them, the left and the right knee. I went to see an orthopedic surgeon and he suggested a partial knee replacement. And I went, no, 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 no. And um, I said, I don't want to lose my patella. And he said, you've already lost your patella. So he did send me to physical therapy. I've been going to physical therapy twice a week for the past five weeks which my friend Daniel Ferris said I should go to immediately. And he was right because they have gotten my knees in much better shape. I have to wear a sleeve sometimes over my knees, but knees, knees, knees. Years of dancing and singing and having fun and trying to be a cheerleader when I was in high school and being a majorette when I was in high school and then trying to dance when I came to New York City because I saw a chorus line and I thought it was so brilliant and I thought, I want to do that. Well, it was too late. But I did get to dance enough that I have knee problems now. So, <laughs> hi. I know all my friends are so sick of me talking about my knees and quite frankly, I'm sick of talking about my knees, so I'll move on. One of my screenplays, Texicali Sting, which is based on my play Texas Homos, was actually chosen for the Liftoff Festival in Austin. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, if anybody knows any indie producers that you can put me in touch with, I think it's a really low budget movie that could be shot in Texas and uh, it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, we had Beckham's fifth birthday. Do you believe this little boy is five years old? And my friend Guy and I, built a scavenger hunt. It only took us three hours on Friday night to cut out all the little things and make up things for them to find on Pier 84. And all his kids came. How many kids? 20. He invited his whole class, which is 15. But then we had some ringers come in, Avery and oh my goodness, Jackson and just a lot of brothers and sisters. So there were a lot of kids. And we had a great time. Uh, the scavenger hunt was a hit. Yay. Thank you, Guy. Um, I lost another dear friend that I hadn't seen for years and years and years, Larry McKinney. So I want to give a heartfelt um, condolences to his family and friends and all our college buddies. It's getting a little close now, right? Well, we're going to take that great ride into the unknown. But he was a sweet, sweet fella. I remember him being so nice and so generous as a young man, and I'm sure it followed him throughout his whole life. Uh, we were all hippies back then, Larry a little less so, but certainly by the time I graduated from University of North Texas, I was a bona fide hippie. And my older brother, Mike, one time looked at me and said, why don't you take a bath? So I think that proves that indeed I did achieve hippie status. Um, I have a new cat. I got a playmate for Chim and hasn't worked out too well. Her name is Becky and she really has not been a friend to Chim nor vice versa. They really don't like each other. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I figure uh, a few more years and maybe they'll become best mates. So I can't take the cat back now, although I have looked at her and said, you will probably more uh, at home at PetSmart. <laughs> and I really want to recommend the um, miniseries Halston. Uh, my friend Richard J. Alexander recommended it on Facebook. And man, is it great. And it goes back to some of the first days when I was first here in New York City. And I would have probably been the girl who was lost up in the air conditioning unit because they wouldn't have let me in. But I really admired all of the people that played at Studio 54 and had a great time. I loved dancing, hence the knees. And I want to share with you some film of Guy. We're wrapping up now. He's been going back and gardening. So I haven't had so much time with him in Central Park as I usually do. But he's here in spirit and 
I'm going to be trying to make this documentary very soon. So I'm hoping that someone will come up and help me throw all this together. And um, so it'll be a great little 30 minute or maybe an hour short. I have about eight hours of material. So I'm wishing you everybody, you see, I don't have my mask on because today, Wednesday, May 19th is the day that New York is opening up again without masks. Now I'm going to be wearing a mask when I go into grocery stores and when I get around a lot of people and I'm going to, you know, continue to be careful. Um, I mean, I did notice that Bill Maher got a positive test for COVID-19 and God knows that, that he was probably more careful than anyone because he wanted to show that we can recuperate from this terrible tragedy and i feel so bad for the half a million plus people who lost their lives during this horrible time i i relish every day of my life and i'm so glad that almost all of us got um out alive my friend mike heron i think about him every day lost way too soon but so is Larry McKinney, who died of cancer. And, you know, there's lots of ways we can leave this world. Only one way in, <laughs> interestingly enough. <laughs> okay, God bless you. Um, I'm really enjoying um, Mayor of Eastwood because my friend Phyllis Somerville had a really nice supporting role in it. So I'm missing her a lot, too. Um, we didn't speak that often, but when we did, we had a great chat about the world. Um, God bless. Take care of yourself. Here's a little clip of Guy. I'm going to stop now. Peace and love, as Guy would say, and blessings to you all. Wear your mask when you're in crowded areas. Yeah. Okay. Kit. I grew up, you know, climbing trees. I love climbing trees. I was being trees and and oh, decades ago, I'd come to the Central Park and climb a tree just for fun, you know. Now there's not that many trees to climb. But one day, those that years ago, uh, I had a job in the park landscaping, a private company would hire people to do jobs in the park. So that's what I was doing. And, and after work, I came over here and there used to be on top of this cliff here, a really gigantic mulberry tree, like 200 years old. It was huge, it stretched out all the way across the walkway. It was really tall and this big around and stuff. So I'd sometimes climb up on that tree. You know, it was sort of like right in here. Here's where the base of it was. So it stretched out all that. So you could just like walk up the actual trunk of the tree. And so I'm sitting up there having a great time, just like looking out and it was summer day and sitting on the mulberry tree. And, and then pretty soon I went, over there, down the hill, there comes Tommy Toon, just walking. And I went, okay, I can't. so I just ran down the hill, I go, and just jumped over the, all that stuff and crossed over here, and there wasn't a fence anymore. Run across the street. Hey, I knew Tommy before a little bit, you know, maybe some, a couple of years before that, I had spent some time with him with Pete Masterson discussing that show. So anyway, I tracked him down. He was coming up that little walkway down there. And I just sort of like tackled him over there. So like we could keep on going. So I caught him coming up. There weren't any fences here. So you could run down the hill. Now that's all fenced up like everybody's so worried about the lawn. So I tack him, tackled him on that flat rock over there. See that one? That one with the sun on it, the very, it looks like you could sit on it. So that's where I ended up tackling him. So, and, uh, and, and ask him, you know, don't you need any little Aggies? I had him down on his back on that rock, you know, I was like, on top of him, I go, don't you need any little Aggies? He goes, well, yeah, maybe we do. You know, I go, well, yeah. And so he uh, said, I'll have you, you know, the stage manager call you and set up an audition, see if you can do the dance. And so that's what happened. Pretty soon, next day, uh, well, Tommy just lived down the street then on 55th or something. So the next day here, got a call from Paul Phillips. He said, come over to the St. James Theater. Okay, get over there and the dance captain, Roger Birdall, taught me the Aggie dance. 
So, so here was part of like, you know, that part. <laughs> Whatever it is. So, you know, just so he's he teaching me, he says, yeah, you can do it. You're a man. That's what Roger said. So got the part. Isn't that amazing? I love that story. But you want to take a walk over here to the. That was a lot of fun. So that was a worthwhile thing. The other thing that happened before was not going to be, I wouldn't have been able to be a dancer in the show. And thanks to Pete Masterson, he like said, yep, gave me all the understudies possible. And then they made me musical director too. So I got to teach everybody the whole show. You know, we're talking about the best little dot, dot, dot in Texas. Probably that was decades ago, 79. And it was surprising that, you know, he was out walking in the park. One time, another time I saw him after, after the show and he was in his white suit, walking like maybe 6th Avenue, somewhere 57th Street and very tall white suit and he had he, he didn't have a one of his shoes was untied and so i said oh tom let me tie your shoe and i got down and tied his shoe you know for a while ago oh can't believe it and he that he, he, it made a lot to him that time because he had just come from the movie people to make that best little dot 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 and they turned turned him down they didn't think he had no experience but uh he appreciated me tying his shoe. <laughs> so I just ran over here. Just tacking them on this rock, see? This is the rock. So he'll, ah, don't you need any Aggies? Don't you need any little Aggies? I said. <laughs> I mean, he was laying down here. I was like, don't you need any little Aggies? Like that. That was a funny experience. It's a great rock for that. You can just sit perfect on it like it was designed for it. Amazing. After the show was over, all these things are just so strangely um, interesting about it. So after the show, after the whole tour, I was back landscaping with that same company, and here we were, right in this area. So we planted all that stuff over there. He's blowing something over here. Planted all this stuff here, and my boss gave me this area. So here I was with the rototiller, rototilling all this out in here, rototilling this whole same area that I just tackled Tommy Tune on, and planting with the creeping Euonymus, this hole here. And of course, then after the years, it didn't take. But all that down in there took, we planted all that too. And then this didn't take, so they put it into a lawn. But I think that, I thought that was like bizarrely, hey, out of the blue. You know, here I am after the show of still working on this area. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> but it's a great, great, uh, great rock. And I think he tells the story that, oh, yeah, how he met me. It was like I got tackled in the park by a guy. You know, that's how he says he didn't say anything about the other part. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, that's the story of this rock and my Tommy Tune experience. <laughs>